go. Streaming from South Africa to the world. To the world. This is the Stonks Go Moon podcast. What just happened? We break it down so you don't have to. Welcome everyone to the Stonks Go Moon podcast. My guest today, Steve Ward, he is a high performance coach, trainer and consultant to trading, investing and banking professionals. Steve, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? Good, thank you, Rocco. Yeah, thanks for the invitation to uh, to be on the podcast. Appreciate it. Only a pleasure. Uh, Steve, I want to touch on something today uh, that people don't really talk about when they want to start trading or they're thinking about trading. And it's that we are aware that trading is 90% you know, mental and 10% technical. And it's something that you are also like very keen on um, in your in your profession is the psychological nature of trading. But you really put a lot of emphasis on the physiology um, aspect um, of of everything. Why why exactly is that? Yeah. So the the physiology is really what's going on in the brain body system while people are taking risk or or making decisions, and therefore so it's very relevant to to those in the trading investing space. Um, I think it's important to recognise that you know people focus a lot on psychology, which which is good, um, and the mind and the brain are sitting inside the body, so it's called being embodied. So the functionality of the brain is influenced by our um, physical state, so things like our level of stress, level of fatigue, um, all that's operating um, inside that mind-body-brain system. And so when a trader takes uh, risk, makes a decision, when they execute a trade, whether they are aware of it or not, their physical state or their physiology is impacting that decision in some way or other, either helpfully, unhelpfully, or, or possibly neutral. Yeah, especially now with COVID, right? And we are being sort of uh, forced inside of our homes. We can't go out. Uh, people would normally go into a routine, go to a gym. What, any advice that you can give for people, maybe uh, traders that are stuck in or confined at the moment? Well, I think if you're confined, you may be confined in terms of, you know, being able to move outside. But there's plenty of opportunities to, you know, to be active inside, uh, physically active. Physical activity is one part, one driver or one lever of your physiology. But also, you know, you can be looking after yourself in terms of, you know, sleep, um, recovery, nutrition. So there's other elements that we can train or work on in that environment. It might be in the short term, you know, people have to be less physically active than normal or they have to vary or change that that, that activity routine. But there's still plenty of things that can be done. Um, and I think, you know, if we look more broadly, it's not even just about physical activity. You know, it's just about, you know, standing up, moving around, you know, even yeah. simple things like that can be can be can be important. So I think the danger, as I've seen in some of my clients, has been they're just spending more time sitting at home than they would do if they were at work because they're not getting up, you know, walking to the water cooler, going to the kitchen to grab a coffee and so on. So even just being mindful of the very basic levels of movement can be a starting point. Yeah, so I mean, that's basically, it's, it sounds very simple, but I think it's something that's overlooked. Um, and any change in your state, right, or your state or your being, um, it's something that you need to journal, right? And we'll talk about now, it's why most novice traders don't keep a trading journal. Why is it important to keep a trading journal? And why do some start and then stop? Yes, I mean, the journaling is an interesting one because I think it's a bit like um, healthy eating or or exercise. Most people know they should be doing it, but the the consistency of doing it or the level to which it's done obviously varies significantly. And not many people do it consistently and do it consistently well. So, um, I mean, there's many forms of journaling. So, you know, the basic journal that all traders should be keeping really is, is a trade log, you know, some sort of journal of their trades and their trading decisions. And I think those that are doing some journaling, that's probably what they're doing. The element of of journaling, which interests me, which isn't done so well, is yes. when people start to think about what was I thinking and what was I feeling while I was executing my trades, when I was in the in the position, if I changed my mind, what was I thinking and feeling at the time? Why did I get out of the trade? What was I thinking and feeling? So I think there's, there's maybe um, at the higher level, the more advanced level, the journaling should be incorporating thoughts and feelings i.e. it should be incorporating the psychology and indeed or even uh, things around how you're feeling in terms of stress and energy therefore the physiology that might have influenced why you did what you did Um, I mean even my my um, professional institutional clients 
there's still a um, or there's a lower level of journaling quality than I would I would um, <laughs> like. Um, if, shall we? Say? I'm trying yeah. to find the right phrase, but I think it's just one of those things where <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, well, well, the, the challenge with Israel is, is that for a long time people have been struggling with how do I, what needs to go in a journal? So that's difficult for some people. So what do I, what do I journal? How do I do it? What questions do I ask myself? How do I make sure the journal becomes not just um, a routine that I make myself do, but becomes useful and valuable. That's really important. It needs to be cumulative. So, so it needs that the the, the data in the journal needs to transfer from kind of the trade or from the day into the week across the month across the quarter there needs to be goal setting it needs to be action focused there's a lot of there's a lot of um structure to a really good journal that a lot of people just haven't got there haven't got right yet and so they struggle with it then they start doing it it doesn't most people start it and then either they're just not disciplined enough to do it or the structure of the journal is too complex or it's not effective enough so it doesn't give them anything of value so it becomes just a process yeah so Um, so in my work with clients, we're trying to help them to kind of, you know, identify what's going to be a simple, effective way of journaling your trades, your psychological state, your physical state that, that becomes engaging. So actually it's like an athlete. When I worked in sports psychology, all athletes have a training diary and they love the the training diary is like the core. They're coming back to it all the time. Everything's recorded. It's the data's in there. They're fascinated by it. They share it with the coach. So it's a really engaging process. Yet in trading, it's almost seen as a, a, Oh, I've got to keep the journal. You know, it's almost seen as like a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, journaling isn't natural, right? It's, it's unnatural, especially for men. If I coming from, from, where I'm coming from, it's always something that women used to do, right? Because from a young age, they would keep a journal that would write mm, down the, the diaries, thoughts. Yeah. The, yeah, the diaries and mm. the thoughts and the feelings. And for men, we yeah. are sort of suppressed those for a long time. And having really to sit down and write, uh, it can be a very raw process of, you know, what I went through and what I experienced. And that's why I like about your new book called Trader's Mind Journal that uh, recently came out. And I think it's yep. going to help a lot of people with, a, with that process. Yeah. So you, I think you're right. I mean, I think, you know, journaling, um, when, we, when we're thinking about thoughts and feelings, it's maybe something that perhaps in the male population um, is something we don't do maybe as, as often as may be useful. I think, and yeah, so the Trader's Mind Journal really is, is all the things I've talked about in terms of structure, effectiveness, simplicity, right questions, preparation, reflection, evaluation, timeframes. That's what we've tried to capture. And it's myself and a, a colleague of mine, Simon, Simon Cottrell, who actually is a fund manager. So he's kind of a, he's, he's on the trading side. I'm on the psychology side. And we've tried to that's blend our experiences together. So that's how, and it's actually it was, it was Simon's idea to to do the journal. So, um, and so the idea behind it is, yeah, I mean, it, it can be challenging sometimes to to kind of lay out these thoughts and feelings. And actually, one of the questions we have in the journal at the start of each day is just simply, "What's on my mind?" I.e., yeah. what's on my mind from yesterday, and what's on my mind about what's going to go ahead in the day to the you know the day going forward. So, just this idea about being okay to write down your thoughts and feelings about it because they're there. And whether you know it or not, they're there. And if they're there, they can influence you. But they are more influential if they're inside and outside of conscious awareness than if you get them out on paper. Once you're aware of them and get a bit a distance from them, you're not as attached to them. So you, you can be a bit more responsive and less reactive to them. So we've tried to make it kind of a it's very performance focused. So it's about getting better at performance, about making better decisions and taking better risk and, and, and all the things around that. But within that, there are some exercises and questions that are deeply psychological, but in what I would say in a non-invasive, non-threatening way, such that by the end of that three month journal, people should be pretty comfortable actually with the questions. And I think they'll get a lot of insights from that. The danger is, um, initially people might do it more superficially so when we yeah. say what's on my mind it's very easy to go you know or oh, i'm a bit stressed or i'm a bit tired <laughs> yeah uh, i mean very vague and, yeah. and what we're going to encourage as you go through the journal is to get a little bit deeper because yeah. stress is a very pervasive phrase but stress could be for some people anxious for somebody else it might be frustrated for somebody else it might be irritated so we're trying to there's an exercise in a journal about trying to identify specific emotions so um, it's a skill to develop. Yeah, but I mean, look if you if you look at tra- traders and even investors or fund managers, you're an athlete, right? You are a top athlete. It's like a running a sprint or running a marathon. And I mean, I, th- I think 
a lot of people don't realize that why you need a performance coach for this industry because they think, oh, well, I can just go out there and do it myself. I don't, you know, really need any of anyone else. So if you can talk to me a bit about how important, uh, I mean, we know it's important, but for someone like that maybe wants to make it a profession or just like starting out, how important is a performance coach and what are some future trends in the space that we're going to see come out? Well, I think in, in, in terms of who needs the performance coach, who, the people who need them are the people that want them, uh, essentially. Yeah. So this is, this is true whether it's sport, whether it's military, whether it's trading. Um, everybody can benefit from a coach, but probably in different ways and to different degrees. The people that probably need them least are beginner traders. What beginner traders need, beginner and novice traders need, are good trading um, you know, trading coaches as in, you know, um, strategy coaches, yes, uh, yes. mentors, people who can teach them the basics well, because unless you've got a good strategy and you've got good skills and knowledge, the psychology, psychology alone won't make you any money in the market. No. So you've got to have the skills, you need the abilities um, at the core level. So for the beginner to novice trader, all the investment really should be in, in, in getting the best possible training you can. Now, yes. as you progress down, the, down the, the learning curve and get into maybe, let's say, kind of intermediate to advanced level, yes. then suddenly the role of the psychology is going to be playing a larger and larger part in what you do day to day. You know, for, for most of my clients who are experienced traders in hedge funds and banks, commodity trading houses and, and energy firms and so on, they've got good levels of skill. They've got good knowledge. Uh, they've, they've got experience. They know what they're doing. So that part, like the process piece, is really strongly built. But around that day-to-day and decision-decision, the, uh, the psychology and the physiology, so the role of the mind and body, yes. is going to be playing um, a significant part in what they do. Whereas if you are a beginner, unless you've got that process piece dialed down, then actually the mind and the body, whilst they influence you, aren't going to be the biggest challenge you're going to be facing. So I think performance coaches uh, probably become more impactful as you move along the learning curve, I think there's some for the beginner. There's some basics oh, that's good to advice. Yeah, get your head that's around. Good but I think, yeah. yeah, I think early on, if you've got a pound to spend, I say, you know, if you're a beginner trader, spend it on on learning the skill of trading. Yeah. Um, before I let you go, future. I just want to touch about because you're in the space of performance coaching. What are some future yeah. trends that you're seeing coming up? Especially, I mean, uh, things have changed with COVID, and I mean, yes, yeah. yeah. So. Well, over the last five to six years, I've been spending more and more time working on the physiology with my clients and more of my clients are engaging that. So we're looking at things around sleep, physical activity, nutrition, recovery strategies, uh, wearable technology to measure state in real time to adjust decision making and risk taking strategies. So that's kind of definitely one big theme. Uh, Use of neuro um, feedback. So looking at kind of, you know, what's going on in the brain. I mean, we were doing that in the early days, 10 years ago. Um, so very experimental and there's more and more of that going on now. So can we see what's going on in the brain and how that influences risk-taking and decision-making? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's definitely a big trend. The use of technology in general. Uh, so how yeah. we can, you know, capture personal data, market data, um, psychological data, perhaps blend it all together to kind of inform decision-making. So let's call that maybe decision support or decision architecture where we're getting various inputs to inform traders' decisions. Uh, that's probably, I guess, the, the center point of where everything's trying to get to. That's really interesting. If one people want to go and connect with you, uh, where can they find you? And also what are some other stuff that you're busy with at the moment? Yeah. Okay. So for connection, um, LinkedIn, obviously that's where, we, where we've connected, I think. So that, that's yes. obviously a good place to find me. <laughs> uh, um, um, then for, for sort of institutional traders, my website is performanceedgeconsulting.co.uk. For the retail traders, I do a, a, a sort of a, a separate retail focused um, um, project, which is tradeatyourbest.com. So you can find me there. Uh, what am I working on now? I've got a lot of client projects on the go uh, institutionally across a, a variety of different um, trading businesses. So lots of project work, coaching as always. Uh, Traders Mind Journal literally has just come out. So we're trying to do a bit awesome. of a push on the Traders Mind Journal, which is which I'm pretty excited about. Um, uh, yeah, that's, I think that's probably that's it at the moment. That's the stuff. We'll put those links in the comments to our listeners. Peace, yeah. love and prosperity. And we'll check in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>